<clears throat> That's like I've got a tie on, I haven't got a tie on. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and this is a series called The State of the UK's Transport, which is where I'm going to talk about different sectors of the UK's transport, talking about proposals, situations, predicaments it's in at the moment, and given my point of view. This video's conversation is going to be talking about the UK adopting Hitachi Class 800s for their intercity services. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing a hat inside, that's not the topic of conversation for this video. The topic of conversation is why the UK keep adopting Class 800 Hitachis for their intercity services. That's what it's about. So yeah, I do love the Class 800 Hitachis. I think they are amazing units and I'm a fan of the shape and the different exteriors they can come in in sense of the different wrappings that different operators put on them. However, I'm not a huge fan of majority of the UK operators that have intercity services adopting this unit, whether it's going to be a class 800 or an 802 or an 801 or you get the gist. There's still the same body of work being built in Japan. And I say about the fact of it being built in Japan for a reason. I'll get to that. So there's two ways looking at the UK adopting Hitachi class 800s for the majority of their intercity services. So you have one side where it does increase in connectivity between the two nations as the UK are ordering new trains from another nation, building their trust and, you know, their bond together with each other. Because before the class 800s, the last units, correct me if I'm wrong, that were built for the UK were the class 395 built for um, HS1, for Southeastern's HS1. And obviously this resurgence of building these new class 800s for the UK railways is great as it builds a great connectivity and you get to see some beautiful, as I mean beautiful, Japanese train construction and designing on the UK railways because Japanese can be argued to have the best trains in the world. Don't take me for that, but it can be argued. And it's beautiful to see them on the UK railways. However, with GOWR already having 800 units, LNER already having 800 units, Hull trains already having 800 units, Transpennine Express already having 800 units, as well as an order from East Midland Railways and Avanti West Coast. It just seems like it's just overpopulating the market with trains and the exact same trains. Yeah, regardless, yes, they're going to be built in different wraps and yes, some of them are bi-mode, some of them are all electric. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still the same body built in Japan being transported over to the UK to then be constructed. And even in that factor, when I said about them being constructed in Japan and only put together in the UK, that's a lot of job opportunities being lost compared to building these trains in the UK. And don't get it twisted, I know there are many factors to train manufacturing, but the essence is in my mind, I feel something that's going to be used in a country by the people of that country who live in that country should be built in that country, creating wealth and boosting the economy within that country. Because currently the trains are being, again, being shipped from Japan to here to be put together. Whereas with other train manufacturers such as Alstom, they are building and putting together the train and doing the testing and whatnot all within the UK, which creates a vast amount of jobs compared to having the Hatar train being manufactured in Japan and then shipped over to here. But at least it's not like other train manufacturers where the whole train itself is being manufactured, put together, tested, all within that country and then being shipped over, which means there are no jobs really for any UK citizens. Again, I'm not trying to take anything away from this. I do love the Class 800s. I'm just trying to give perspective on the situation because there are other train manufacturers that build the whole trains in the UK. Some don't do it completely. Like the Hitachi 800s kind of sit in the middle, you know, they're kind of built somewhere else, then they get shipped here and put together here. Yeah. And another factor to bring in here is a probably a bit less of an objective point of view and a bit more subjective to train enthusiasts, but I think it's still a valid point. Kind of how I mentioned before, how like a lot of the UK operators are buying these trains and using the intercity services. This makes it less interesting to look at. You know, when you're going on days out to train sport or when you're just on the network in general, back in the day, I'm acting like I'm old, I'm not old, but even going five years or like four or three years ago, there was such a vast amount of variety on the network compared to now or compared to what's going to be in the future. Because a lot of older train stock have been lost either to scrapping or to other train operators and been replaced with class 800s and a lot of class 800s because the whole of the GWR network is pretty much 800s now, minus a couple down south if you go near Exeter and those areas. Plus LNER pretty much have no intercity 225s anymore. They run very rarely 
for an enthusiast point of view, I just it just looks less interesting to take shots of because it's less variety in the network. Um, one memory I will have, but well, it's not really a memory. It's more when I was doing um, my when I was doing research on trains and stuff um, a couple of months back for a video. I was um, I did not know the old op um, the old franchise operator of LNER, which was GNER, which is Great Northeastern Railway. They operated. Eurostar class 373s on the East Coast Main Line. Oh, uh, like, like this is this is going back. I think this was in the early 2000s. So I, I was like, incy wincy. I was probably in the placenta. Yeah, um, yeah. I watched the video of that. I was like, I could not fathom that. Obviously, it wasn't reaching its full potential because it's capped at the miles per hour the trackage can run. But the the fact that it was still on the East Coast Main Line going from London's Kings Cross all the way up to North, I think it was. I think the furthest it went to was either Leeds and York because I thought I can't remember the exact reason if it's the gauge or some sort of specifics. It couldn't go further than York. I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was York was the destination. It couldn't go further than. But the fact that it could even go north of London on the UK railways is sick, and I'm so annoyed I missed that. But that's just trying to give an example of what the variety you got on the UK railways that's just not there or not going to be there as much anymore especially when Avanti West Coast are going to get rid of the Voyagers for the Class 800 but again to flip it again back to its other side yes if you want to look at it from a non-enthusiast point of view it makes sense to order a lot of the same trains because you um the parts are going to be similar so they're going to have a lot of the same parts if they buy a big order of parts it's usually cheaper because big orders are the same thing are usually cheaper blah, blah, blah. um so I do understand it from uh, a business point of view to an extent. But at the heart, I'm an enthusiast. I'm a railway enthusiast. Most of you guys are railway enthusiasts. And I think you could agree on the point that having a load of 800s on the network is less interesting than the variety we had before. Yeah. The only, only operator doesn't really fit into this. That some of you may or may not call it an intercity service, but I, I factor it as an intercity service in my opinion. The Greater Anglia services that run from Norwich to London Liverpool Street, they use Stadler class 745s, which are quite beautiful units in my opinion, and they look very different to anything else seen on the UK railways, and the sound they make is amazing. Um, so if you ever get out to listen to them, great units, great units, great units. But why I bring up that point is that I thought operators shouldn't just go down the simple route and just order a bunch of trains that are, you know, safe, safe <laughs> and easy to get and probably get it for a good price and instead go for something that nobody else is going for you know that stands out for the crowd that people go wow you see that great angular class 745 yeah i saw that no one's talking about the class 800s like that everyone's picking out the the unique the the one of the kind you know the one that stands out yeah Every operator should go for that. No operator should be going for the basics. Everyone should go to stand out from the crowd because that's what the UK Railways is about, standing out from the crowd, not to serve commuters and to make money. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you think of the UK Railways adopting a lot of the Class 800s for their intercity services. Do you like the 800s? Do you hate them? Tell me what you think. I'm intrigued to know your opinion. Anyways, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Come all looking dapper on dapper. Yeah? Now when Nathan's come back, suit and tie. Minus the tie, but suit and tie, you know what I mean? Coming proper, coming coming suave. Swabfish. Swervy. Swervy.